research has proved that leaders think differently. How different they are from the masses. How much charisma, convincing ability and negotiation skills do they possess makes it all a different thing for them to stand out in the crowd. That's how they, the face, they stand out the face in the crowd. Yes, leaders. Who they are. What are the leadership skills? What does it take to make a very good leader, efficient leader and a strong leader? This is the topic of today's video. We are going to discuss in detail all these things. What a leader is, who a leader is, what are his qualities, how he stands from the rest of the masses. I welcome you all for today's video. My name is Wahida Begum, Assistant Professor at the Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad. So let's get started. Leadership skills are the abilities people have to lead projects, encourage initiatives, build a sense of common purpose and empower others. Leadership skills can help you in all aspects of your career, from applying for jobs, for seeking career advancements. It is one of the soft skills that employers value. Leadership skills often incorporate several different personality traits and communication abilities that are useful for anyone to learn and practice over time. You see, when organizing other people to reach a charged goal, whether you are in a manager, management position or leading a project, leadership skills require you to motivate others to complete a series of tasks, often according to the schedule. Leadership is not just one skill, but rather a combination of several skills working together. If mastered, it can help a person guide people, not only in professional settings, but also situations at personal level as well. Why are leadership skills important? Effective leaders are essential to any organization. They can help build strong teams within a business and ensure projects, initiatives or other work functions are performed successfully. Because the skills of a leader involve multiple interpersonal communication skills, anyone can exercise and hold their leadership abilities. There is a lot of difference between leadership and bossism. As the picture suggests, a boss leads. A person who gives orders to employees and behaves in an authoritative way, seeks control and tells his men what to do is a boss. And a person who influences, inspires, supports and encourages a group of individuals and works continuously on the achievement of goals is a leader. That is why it, it should be aimed to become a leader than a boss. Not only it is favorable, but also he helps in hierarchical structure of work platforms, therefore inducing uh, more and productivity rather than work pressures and demands. So examples of skills that make a strong leader, which includes patience, empathy, active listening, reliability, dependability, creativity, positivity, effective feedback, timely communication, team building, flexibility, risk taking and ability to teach and mentor. We are going to discuss all these aspects or the skills that a leader should possess to become a strong and effective leader. A person should have all these qualities. We are going to discuss them all in detail one by one. Almost any positive soft skill might be considered a leadership skill. For example, active listening helps leaders bring projects to completion by hearing the ideas and concerns of the team. Empathy, for example, helps leaders understand how their team feels about their workload, environment and workplace relationships. Here is a list of must-have leadership skills that make prove valuable to everyone. That is decisiveness. The first and the foremost is decisiveness. These are some of the important 
uh, skills that a leader must possess to become a strong leader. Effective leaders are those who can make decisions quickly with the information they have. Effective decision making comes with time and experience. As you become more familiar with your specific industry, you will be able to make decisions faster even when you don't have all of the necessary information. Decisiveness is seen as a valuable leadership skill because it can help more projects along faster and improve efficiency. The second is integrity. A a leader must possess integrity. It is often seen as just truthfulness or honesty, but in many cases it also means having and uh, standing by a set of strong values. Integrity in the workplace often means being able to make ethical choices and helping the company maintain a positive image. All businesses seek to hire workers who have a strong sense of integrity. Then comes a relationship building or team building. Leadership requires the ability to build and maintain a strong and collaborative team of individuals working towards the same goal. Team building requires other leadership strengths uh, like communication skills and conflict resolution. Even they must even possess problem solving abilities. Good leaders are skilled at solving issues that arise on the job. Effective problem solving often requires a stay often requires staying calm and identifying a step by step solution. Problem solving skills can help leaders make quick decisions, resolve obstacles with their team and external teams as well and alike and ensure projects are completed on time according uh, to specifications. Dependability. Being a dependable leader means that people can trust and rely on you. A dependable person follow, follows through on plans and keeps promises. The strong relationship built by a dependable leader uh, is a resilient team that is able to work through difficulties that may arise. Here, ability to teach and mentor. One of the skills that differentiates leadership from uh, many other competencies is the ability to teach and mentor. In the introduction of who a boss is and who a leader is, we discussed about this. What is the difference between um, I mean, mentoring and trying to say that I have the I am an expert of the knowledge. If effectively teaching colleagues or subordinates how to show in their careers helps organization scale. Often, the skill requires that leaders think less about themselves and more about how to make their team as a whole successful. How to improve your leadership skills? You can practice good leadership skills in any role. At any level, for example, showing up on time to meetings and meeting deadlines show dependability. Offering support and coaching to less experienced colleagues is also an example of leadership. If it seems like a good fit for you, you might consider seeking out leadership roles to develop and practice your leadership skills. Here are some examples of additional ways you can develop your leadership skills. Identify your leadership style. While you will use different styles of leadership for different occasions, identifying your leadership style can help you refine specific skills that will be effective for your team or project. You might use your team or project's goal to help identify what leadership styles will be most effective for you. Find resources like books or podcasts about leadership. A self-study on leadership may help you get a better understanding of how to develop your leadership skills. Many books on the subject exist, including the 1937 uh, Dale Carnegie book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, which has been a favorite among many business leaders for decades. There are also many podcasts and video workshops on, uh, you can find offer at no cost online. 
participate in leadership training courses or workshops. You can find both in-person and online courses that help teach leadership skills. In uh, in-person courses in particular often include practice sessions and role play. Find leadership activities outside of work. If you have trouble in finding leadership opportunities on the job, you might be able to find them uh, outside of your workplace. This can include taking the lead in organization, organizing activities at, uh, I mean, or work outings with your colleagues. You can even study leadership styles you admire, leaders whom you look for. When you see leaders you admire, whether they are at your job or in your community, take note of the specific qualities that they make them a great leader. Focus on the ways that can that you can develop those qualities. Uh, apply them in your work. It might also be helpful to see uh, to set specific goals towards developing one practice at a time. Then find a mentor. The best way to learn is by studying under those who ad you admire most. If people ask a leader you respect to mentor you on a weekly or monthly basis, they can help you set goals towards becoming a better leader by developing skills and using them. Then uh, we will discuss about how to highlight leadership skills when applying for jobs, which is going to be a very helpful um, skill for you in your coming years after you complete your BTEC degree. You will be venturing into the market and there you have to, how uh, best you can apply your leadership skills and prove as a best candidate for the particular organization where you're working for. If being a leader is one of your career goals, you should include leadership skills on your resume. Uh, try incorporating key traits you possess that may be valuable to future employers. You may be able to uh, present those skills in different areas of your resume, uh, such as the skills and achievements section as well as in the experience section. Your cover letter is also a good place to showcase uh, the leadership ability. Uh, these two sections uh, you can focus more on in expressing your leadership qualities over there. Okay, and then uh, we will go to learn about what are the styles of leaders, leadership styles. We have slightly touched the topic of leadership styles and now we'll look at them in detail. Why are leadership styles important? As you develop leadership skills, you will likely to uh, use different processes and methods to achieve your employer's objective and meet the needs of your employees who report to you. To be effective as a manager, you might use several different leadership styles at any time, any given time. By taking the time to familiarize yourself with each of these types of leaderships, you might recognize certain areas to improve upon or expand your own leadership styles. You can also identify other ways to lead that might better serve your current goals and uh, understand how to work with managers who follow a different style uh, from that of your own. Here are the 10 most common leadership styles. First is coach. A coaching leader is someone who can quickly recognize their team members' strengths, weaknesses, and motivations to help each, of, each individual improve. We are going to discuss uh, these in the SWOT anal analysis. We have a different video and SWOT SWOT analysis where we are going to discuss in detail about how a leader or the manager of that organization can find out the weaknesses, the strength uh, opportunities, weakness and uh, threats that uh, an individual goes through and how to find out how, does, how to sift a leader from that group. This uh, type of leader often assists team members in uh, setting smart goals and then provides regular feedback with challenging projects uh, to promote growth. They are skilled in setting clear expectations and creating a positive motivating environment. Then a leader also should have should be a visionary. Visionary leaders have a powerful ability to drive progress and assure periods of change by inspiring employees and earning trust for new ideas. 
a visionary leader is also able to establish a strong organizational bond. They strive to foster confidence among direct reports and colleagues alike. A servant. Servant leaders live by a people first mindset and believe that when team members feel uh, personally and professionally fulfilled, they are more effective and more likely to produce great works regularly. Because of uh, their emphasis on employee satisfaction and collaboration, they tend to achieve higher levels of respect. Then autocratic, also called the authoritarian style of leadership, these types of leader is focused almost entirely on the results and efficiency. They often make decisions alone or with a small trusted group and expect employees to do uh, exactly what they are asked to. It can be helpful to think of these types of leaders as military commanders. Democratic. The democratic leader style, also called the participative style, is a combination of the autocratic and laissez-faire types of leadership. Democratic leaders ask for input and consider feedback from uh, their team before making a decision because team members uh, feel that their voice is heard and their contributions matter. A democratic leader style is often credited with the uh, fostering higher levels of employee engagement and workplace satisfaction. Pace setter. The pace setter leadership style is one of the most effective for driving fast results. These leaders are primarily focused on performance. They often set high standards and hold their team members accountable for hitting their goals. Then we have the transformational leaders. Leadership style is similar to the code style in that it focuses on clear communication, goal setting and employee motivation. However, instead of placing majority of the energy um, into each employee's individual goals, the transformational leader is driven by a commitment to the organization objective. We have the trans transactional leadership. A leader who is transactional is one who is lesser focused on performance similar to a pace setter. Under this leadership style, the manager establishes uh, predetermined incentives usually in the form um, of priority reward for success and disciplinary action for failure. Transactional leaders are also focused on mentorship, instruction and training to achieve goals and enjoy the rewards. And then we have the bureaucratic. Bureaucratic leaders are similar to autocratic leaders in that they expect their team members to follow the rules and procedures precisely as written. Okay. Choosing your leadership style. Out of the ones, the 10 styles of leaders uh, that we have discussed above, it, is, it depends on you now to become what kind of a leader that you want to become. So, if you if you want to become one particular type of leader, you have to uh, follow the set rules that have been designed by the experts of that style of leadership. Now, choosing your uh, leadership style, knowing which of the leadership style works best for you is a part of being a good leader. Developing a signature style with the ability to strength into others or a stretch into others as the situation you know, warrants may help enhance your leadership effectiveness. Know yourself. How to know yourself. Analysis. Start by uh, learning what your current dominant leadership style is. Ask trusted colleagues to describe the strength of your leadership style. You can also uh, take a leadership style assessment. Understand the different styles. Familiarize yourself with the response, repertoire of leadership styles that can work best for a given situation. What new skills do you need to develop? Practice. Be genuine with any approach you do. Moving from your current leadership style to a different one may be a challenging at first. Practice the new behaviors until they become natural. In other words, don't abandon who you are. When it comes to uh, gaining trust and loyalty, authenticity rules, meaning 
that the best leadership style is often what comes most naturally to you with some key enhancement to help you evolve. Then stay agile. An agile leadership style may be the ultimate leadership style required for leading today's talent. As the Chinese proverb goes, the wise adapt themselves to circumstances as water molds itself to the picture. Then we will talk about the qualities of a good leader. You have come to know who a leader is, what is the difference between a boss and a leader, and then the styles of leadership and how to adapt to one of the styles of leadership. Then we are now going to throw some light on the qualities of uh, great leaders. They translate the company's vision into reality. They work towards it. Believe in their teams. They trust the team that they, the team, they rely on that and they believe that they are going, that, that the team is going to work on the lines that have been marked out and the team is efficient enough to do that. That they believe in that and they trust. Them. Have the ability to motivate and inspire others. That is the best quality that a leader can possess. Uh, then uh, then they will show how to connect and engage with employees, have a clear vision and know how to effectively communicate in the workplace, how to uh, take up the work and how to uh, meet the deadlines. Uh, and they also, as good leaders, know how to coach employees so they can develop their skills and improve their performance. Great leaders have a great understanding of the business's strategy and know how to communicate to their teams. Enhance dialogues in the workplace. Listen to the employees. That is a two-way communication that we discussed. Now, unlike the boss, see, if the boss gives the orders and the leader listens to the employees and he has a two-way communication. Uh, lead. He leads by example and know to how to create unity in the workplace and courageous, that is team building ability, how to strengthen the team and how to first build the team and then how to work towards strengthening the team also is a great uh, asset of a leader. Encourage open and transfer, transparent communication. Nothing should be hidden from the group members. It should encourage, the good leader encourages open and transparent communication between the members of the whole group or the team. Um, they ex are, ex are change drivers. They encourage creativity and innovation in the workplace. Uh, instead of going and following the age-old archaic style of working, the the good leaders encourage uh, creativity of the team members, recognizes uh, others' achievements. It is not unlike the boss. The boss wants to take the whole credit of the team on his name. The leader doesn't do that, recognizes others' achievements and also uh, gives uh, rewards for that. Have, he has empathy. He thinks putting himself in the shoes of others and how as a member uh, he would feel if treated the same way. Translate the company's vision into reality. He works towards uh, the accomplishment of the vision of the company. Includes em employees in decision making. They effectively uh, delegate. Take employees' well-being and safety one of their top priorities. Last but not the least, great leaders don't fall, they learn. don't fail, they learn. So, what do successful leaders have in common? We discussed on the styles and then now we discussed about the qualities of good leaders. If uh, these qualities are possessed by um, some people, they become very good and strong leaders. What do what do successful leaders have in common? All successful leaders have different ways to define leadership and the top skills it takes to effectively lead a team. For example, some of them, great leaders, are the ones who inspire their team, while for others, being a great leader means motivating employees and stimulating their creativity. But they all put communication as a key skill leaders should have. 
After all, it is through great communication that leaders can motivate, inspire and support their teams. Why is uh, communication important uh, in leadership? What are the prerequisites? It is like a circle. One thing leads to the other. If a leader is efficient, he or she might make use of all the uh, available uh, strategies to make his team strong. First build the team, make it strong and uh, use some strategies to become a good leader and uh, on the contrary, take up the organization works and make the deadlines. Okay, taking the vision in, into, turning the vision into reality. In in doing so, these are some of the important things that are required. Uh, why communication is important in this? How to work, get the work done? Uh, a leader is someone who inspires for positive incremental change by empowering those around them to work toward common objectives. A leader's most powerful tool for doing so is communication. Active communication is vital to gain trust, align efforts in the pursuit of goals and inspire positive change. When communication is lacking, important information can be misinterpreted causing relationships to suffer and ultimately creating barriers that hinder progress. If you are interested in enhancing your leadership capabilities, here are some eight communication skills you need to be more effective in your role. Leadership is the art of promoting a group of people to act up, uh, towards achieving a common goal. It should be learned in order to harmoniously work and efficiently intermingle in institutions. A person who gives orders to employees and behaves in an authoritative way, seeks control and tells his men what to do is a boss. A person who influences, inspires, supports and encourages a group of individuals and works continuously on the achievement of goals is a leader. There, are, there is a difference between bosses and late leaders. Guess which characteristics belongs to the bosses and which belongs to the leaders. One who takes know-it-all stance. Communicating in is all distraction. The one who is open to new ideas and two-way communicator. Now you see the difference between the leader and, and the boss. A boss is a person who takes a know-it-all stance, poses that he knows each and everything about the organization and uh, doesn't take time to you know, take ideas from his subordinates or the team members. And he thinks that communication is only a one direction. His communication to his higher official. He is not taking any uh, opinions or suggestions or ideas from his uh, team. But in the case of a leader, it is a two-way communication. As we discussed earlier, that a leader is empathetic and also is open to ideas. He is uh, uh, welcoming creativity. That is why uh, leaders are better than bosses, open to new ideas. Then uh, we have uh, creativity. And he, in the case of uh, the leader, he encourages, guides people. The leader guides the people. The boss criticizes, tears people down micromanages everything and he is quick to uh, blame the blame the others the leader blames the others empowers the team is a leader and he takes accountability is a leader uh, demands results focuses on themselves 
the leader inspires and focuses on uh, on the team some examples of skills that make a strong leader patience empathy active listening reliability dependability creativity positivity effective feedback timely communication team building flexibility risk taking ability to teach and mentor if one wants to become a leader first and foremost thing that he must learn is to be patient patient towards not meeting deadlines or if certain things go wrong in in the group he should have the patience to till uh, the, the work is done and it, it becomes normal if a leader is empathetic towards his team members he will be welcomed very well active listener in any relationship whether it is at the institution or within it, it is an organizational relationship or uh, at the home front an active listener is welcome everywhere so to become a good leader you need to be an active listener you should be open to ideas from others suggestions from others and are trying to uh, and when the, the leader is having that risk taking ability he or she will not hesitate to um, take uh, listen and work on other suggestions then a person should be reliable if uh, certain things are told to uh, the leader people should be rest assured that it is not going to be leaked and the beans are not going to be spilled anyway dependability when in uh, times of uh, dire need that the person can be available dependent on and then the creativity level whether the uh, boss whether the leader is having creativity if he is lacking creative abilities how well he is able to absorb it from others how quickly he is able to he or she is as a leader is able to uh, absorb that and positivity seeing all the things in a positive manner and avoid avoiding negativity and by giving feedback how effective feedback can uh, work wonders in in meeting the deadlines and the accomplishment of the work timely communication being available to to his team members for suggestions for any timely help needed or for further extending the work or for taking the work further how timely communication from the leader side will help the team uh, carry out the work in an efficient manner then comes a team building how effective or how qualified a team leader is in maintaining uh, first building the team and then uh, i mean sifting the candidates uh, through interviews uh, by making sort analysis how how to fit the candidate in the team and how to uh, award the work how to uh, i mean give the work to the individual according to their capabilities recognizing their finding out their caliber and giving the work to them how efficient he is in understanding human psychology uh, i mean how much if uh, support is given how well the result can be proved is all about uh, a leader's ability of team building after making the team there are certain things that the leader has to do to keep the team intact team building is as important as maintaining a good team if a team is a good team is made and if the leader is not efficient it, it, there is uh, within no time the team might break and a flexibility that the leader should not be rigid in his opinions like asking uh, i mean when we talked about the authoritarian uh, leaders style uh, that leader who is rigid in his rules and regulations it will become difficult for the team to follow those rules and regulations and uh, work accordingly the output might not uh, 
you know, be so good. And if the leader has the ability to take risk, he will be, he or she will be proving as a strong leader. And the ability to teach and mentor. We discussed this in earlier part also in detail. Uh, the, the leader should be qualified enough. He should be always absorbent in uh, taking in information, always ready to teach and mentor his team, willing to do that, irrespective of the uh, caste or creed or the background, the cultural background that they are coming from. If uh, the resources are distributed equally among the team members, if he has that uh, empathy, empathy, uh, towards his team members, then he will have that ability to teach and mentor his people. If the, uh, almost all positive soft skills might be considered a leadership skill. Active listening helps leaders bring projects to completion. Then problem solving. A good leaders uh, are skilled in solving issues that arise on the job. Effective problem solving often requires staying calm and identifying a step-by-step -step solution. So the leader must be qualified enough uh, to know the situation, find out the problem first and then uh, try to solve it according to the requirement. It is not that uh, he or she has set up or some goals or mapped out some lines on how to solve problems, but breaking uh, the rule that is being flexible also, uh, pr problem solving can be done. It can help leaders make quick decisions, resolve, uh, resolve obstacles with their team and external teams alike and ensure projects are completed on time according to the uh, specifications. That's how people depend on the leaders. The leaders should be honest. The character of the leader plays a very significant role on how the team progresses in, in their life after. If the leader is honest, the team tends to be honest. In the corporate world, when, when we are making any contracts, that set of rules should be there. The person should have some ethics uh, engraved in his upbringing. That is very important. Okay. With this, we come to an end of the leadership skills session. Let's meet you next time with uh, some other videos on soft skills and interpersonal communication. A sign off with the with this we end the session. I Vahida sign off for today. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.